Hey man, you ever look in the flatter? Wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up. Wake up. This world is not what you think it is. This world is not what you think it is. For centuries, man has been conned into believing that they share a common ancestor with apes and that they live on a spinning ball flying through infinite space at speeds that no human can even fathom. Somehow, this belief system has taken hold with the majority of humanity, although there is no proof for any of these things whatsoever. The verifiable fact is that the Earth underneath our feet is a level and motionless plane. Currently, many people are beginning to understand this fact, despite a lifetime of brainwashing from agenda-driven public education and media propaganda. Close your eyes. To conclude that the Earth is a sphere, and I will give anyone $1,000 right now, outside, if you can prove me wrong. I'm trolling. I'm not trolling. So wait, you, what a hold on. You were a flat earther, but now you're not? That doesn't right. make any sense. Absolutely not. Yes. Can't prove a closed mind. Why is there so much misinformation? Why is there a giant disinformation campaign going on right now when it comes to things like flat Earth? Why are people being hired by, like, Disney? Walt Disney, you know, the mainstream media giant, so that huge YouTubers like Logan Paul and others can discredit it. As so much new information is being revealed and misinformation shared, many people cannot cope with accepting certain possible realities. And as a society, we have been indoctrinated in endless ways by religion, media, politics, science, pharmaceutical industry, etc., etc. We've all been led to believe certain things. Our perception has been manipulated, so we can accept certain limitations as being true. However, when a new concept comes to light, people cannot psychologically cope. Their ingrained beliefs must not be challenged. They feel threatened, so they will attack, defend, fight, to hold on to an idea. They will completely block it out and disregard what is obvious, evident and undeniable in order to protect their conditioning, which of course they're not aware of as being their conditioning. So when a new concept is perceived as being so dangerous, it becomes easier to pretend that it's not true. So they can continue doing what they've always done. This narrow-mindedness, or choosing to be ignorant, is a defense mechanism. They are afraid. How long have you been a flat earther? Um, around 2014, I was doing a podcast about uh, conspiracy theories and people started sending me flat earth stuff and I was like, oh, that's ridiculous. I have an open mind, but not to that. And then finally, another researcher who I uh, respect very much said, uh, Dave, you gotta look at this. And she sent me a couple of videos. And I started watching them with the idea just to disprove it. Okay. The Flat Earth is stupid, right? We, we all know. So you were around Earth or? We were all global Earth. Got it. All of us. Um, because we've been indoctrinated since uh, before preschool. To first understand the Flat Earth, I would have to throw away the idea of a globe and relearn an entirely new model for how the planet works. The world ocean, think of it as a giant lake with all of the continents. Okay. okay as islands. I can roll this now. The shoreline of our world is Antarctica. Antarctica. The foundation of Antarctica is higher than any other continent. Oh, so people go, why can't you fall off the edge of the flat earth? Because if you're on a lake, right, and you sail to the edge of the lake, can you fall off the lake? No, you step up onto the land. We're not allowed to go beyond 60 degrees south. That pink line, the Antarctic Treaty doesn't allow anyone to independently explore beyond that. Now you can spend 10, 20, $50,000 to go to Antarctica for a couple of days. So take you to the little peninsula off the tip of, of um, Santiago off of South America. Now that pe peninsula is bigger than many countries. And they'll, they'll show you some, some ice and some penguins, but no one's independently allowed to explore beyond it. What's beyond it? I don't know. Early 1900s, they were talking about more land beyond Antarctica. What about whoa, this? Whoa, whoa, whoa. This yeah. makes sense. What if we lived here? What if this is where we lived? Right there. These are other ponds with their own suns. Did we live in a tiny pond that is Earth as we know it, trapped by the Antarctic walls and NASA soldiers? Maybe. So you, Dave, was prepared to destroy my top 10 list of reasons why the Earth is round, starting with... What is that? 
but just talking about gravity. So supposedly at the very, very perfect center, there's a, a molecule that says, I am the center, everything come to me. And it, it's because it has higher mass or it's heavier? I don't know, man, right? And neither do the scientists that claim it. They said there's not enough gravity to hold all of the solar system together. Okay. So they created, they go, well, there has to be dark matter and dark I energy see. because if there isn't, then gravity's a lie. When you have a scientific theory and you have 96% of it's wrong, you probably throw out the theory, but in cosmology, they go, no, no, we'll just make up something to fill in that 96%. If I borrowed $100 from you and I gave you four, I go, I go we're even. And you're like, no, where's the other 96? I'm like, well, there's dark dollars. Dark, dark dollars, are you good with that? Because I understand that gravity is complete and total nonsense. That's a bold claim though, yeah. right? For the average person. Ships in the horizon. The horizon is the line at which the Earth's surface and the sky appear to meet. So when somebody sees a ship appear to go over the horizon, they go, oh, that's Earth curve. But if the Earth was curved, there would be a set distance that it would have to disappear. What do I mean by that? The Earth is 24,901 miles around. According to globe math, the drop is six feet at just three miles. So if you're a six foot tall person standing at the edge of perfectly calm water on a perfectly clear day, you should not be able to see the surface of that water beyond three miles because it's drip dipping over your physical horizon at three miles away. But we have pictures where we can zoom in, we can see an oil rig at uh, 17 miles away, whatever, we see many things, but we can see the surface of the water beyond the oil rig. When the water is at complete and total rest, it's perfectly, measurably, testably, provably flat. We can watch a ship go over the horizon um, and it, it looks like it disappears. Yeah. But in reality, we can zoom back in and bring those ships back into view after they completely appeared to disappear. Things disappear because of the angular resolution limits of our eyes. Interesting. Because when you're in an Olympic sized swimming pool, perfectly clear water, you go, we've got your goggles on, you go at one end of the pool, you can't see the other end of the pool. Why? The water's perfectly clear. Because it's not perfectly clear. It becomes more opaque over distance. The air is the same thing. Why is it that I can go out at night, take a picture of the stars, and then every year on the same night forever, I can go out and take this exact same pictures and none of the stars have changed. When we're moving four and a half billion miles a year, they tell us that the earth wobbles, right? We move one degree every 76 years. In the Great Pyramid of Giza, there's also a shaft that points at Polaris. And we're like, Ooh. Hold on, with that wobble, how's it pointing at Polaris? You know what the mainstream argument is? Well, no. there used to be a different North Star 2,000 years ago. We just happened to live in the time where it's pointing towards this other star. Oh, I see. What happens when you open a pressurized can of soda? Um, you open it, what do you hear? What's going on there? Carbon dioxide well, exiting the, the can? Well, the gas that's higher pressure than the outside air is equalizing instantly. Sure. So you open it, so they try to equalize. Take a gas vacuum of equal volume and we're going to remove the barrier you know what's going to happen spontaneously right the gas is going to fill the available volume is the expansion of a gas into a vacuum i have in one of these bulbs some bromine and in the other i have a, a vacuum and if i open the tap between these two you will see spontaneously the bromine rush from one to the other. Now that is the simplest change we can have, perhaps, because all that happens is a change in entropy. In this case, the expansion into a vacuum, nothing else is involved. There's no energy change, there's no temperature change, there's no change except entropy. So the heliocentric model says, we live on a ball surrounded by water, surrounded by air, adjacent to a void, a vacuum of space, to the lowest pressure possible. Why doesn't the air all fly up? And the, the only answer you can come up with is, well, gravity's holding it down. What about high up in the sky where gravity's supposed to be less? How come it's not sucking all the air up? Gas violently fills the available space. But for some reason- So what, how do we have a vacuum in space? Exactly. What do you have to say to the photographs, satellite images that have been provided to us? <laughs> satellite images. So what, <laughs> what, what, what satellite images? Here's the blue marble that was on everyone's iPhone. And uh, if you look at the clouds, it made them Photoshop. Right? And the guy that made, <laughs> the guy that made this, his name is Robert Simmon. He's a um, digital artist for NASA. He said he made it in Photoshop. 2012 image, 2002 image. Look at the United States. How did it get so much bigger? Uh, Here's a 1978 picture and a 2017 picture, right? But what's wrong with that picture? All, the, cl all the clouds are the same. So from 20 1978 to 2017, the clouds never changed? Identical. Oh, uh, I see the circled one. Yeah, you're right. Or, why don't say, we have a photo of Antarctica? Exactly. 
And uh, if you look at Antarctica on space, it's all the clouds. Oh, it's, no, it's not clouds. It's cartoons. They don't even have images. Whoa. No. Other planets are spherical. So if this is that, then that must be this. Have you ever looked up in the sky and seen Jupiter? It's I've never out. even seen a planet in the sky, I'll be honest. Okay, well, you have. You just didn't even notice it because okay. they look like a bright star. Disney and NASA that work together um, want you to believe in other planets and other worlds, okay? We can zoom in on stars and, and planets and their pulsing orbs of energy. What are they? Love to know. I don't know. Your head is the sun and it's holding on to the earth and it's pulling it, it's letting it go fall around you, okay? Right? But I got a moon here and this moon is going around the earth. When it comes towards the sun, shouldn't the sun kind of pull it a little bit? And when it comes around away from the sun, shouldn't it be slowed down a little bit? But the laws of inertia, right? Would argue that it's stuck in this elliptical. You're, you're making up things because nope. you're trying to defend your position, which we all Well, know. I mean, the Glovers will say that the gravity of the earth negates the gravity of the sun. So the sun can hold on to the earth, can hold on to Pluto, but it can't affect the moon. You know who is in charge of all international flights? NASA. Whoa, whoa, whoa. NASA is in charge of Actually, all. Actually? And they run GPS. Not a single plane has, a commercial plane has flown over Antarctica? No, none, ever. Whoa, and now why? Because you can't fly over Antarctica, look at the earth. They'll come, they'll come over Antarctica, and then they'll just come back. But there's so many pilots now that have spoken out, military and commercial pilots. A little bit too much for my brain. This one's gonna send you over the edge. All right, okay? no pun intended. Yeah, over the edge. <laughs> Southern flights prove that, that the earth is not a ball. This is the World Cup soccer, Oh. okay? They were in Doha, they wanted to go back to Buenos Aires. They went to Rome to refuel, and then they went back there. Why didn't they just go here? Because if they did, there's no place to refuel out here. On a flat earth, Doha, Rome, Buenos Aires, <laughs> Taiwan to Los Angeles. They had an emergency right about here. Well, where would you land? Well, you could go to Hawaii. You might as well go to Los Angeles. Instead, they went all the way to Alaska, okay? Flat earth. Right, flat earth, Taiwan, Alaska, Los Angeles. Okay. So here's an emergency. They were going from New York to Hawaii, right about here, and they said, we have to land. So they went to Seattle, which is like a thousand miles out of the way. They got there in record time. New York, Seattle, Hawaii. Yeah. <laughs> Who's directing the airlines to construct these flight pathways? Steve? NASA. So here's the thing. NASA isn't a space agency. NASA is the World Intelligence Agency. Everyone reports to them. FBI, CIA, CIA. KGB, CCP. Well, why would they lie about the shape of the Earth? What difference does it make? NASA was created right after Project High Jump when Admiral Byrd flew out in Antarctica. On the other side of the South Pole, he found land bigger than the United States, filled with resources. Look at that. From middle America, he would be in South, where South Africa is or where, where Australia is. And another continent the size of the United States that no one has ever seen or set foot upon? What does that mean? What if he went from middle America over what they call Antarctica, and then found another continent out here. And that right. would destroy our whole world view of reality. Now, what if there's other civilizations here? What if these are where the controllers of the world live? Okay, what if- I'm getting know, chills right now. Because is... the reality, your soul is going, yes, listen, listen, right? Get rid of, yeah. get rid of <laughs> your program mind. People are don't realize, like, well, Russia would have ratted us out and this and that. They're all in it together. Everything that you know is a lie. The United Nations map, flat earth map, International Maritime Organization Flat Earth Map, World Meteorological Organization Flat Earth Map, International Civil Aviation Organization. These are the things that control the world. Why do they all have Flat Earth Maps? Well, I don't know, artistically, maybe they couldn't. Artistically? Is that your explanation? <laughs> Here, now, let me ask you a question. If this is where we live, would you call this the outer space? Sure. Is it, what is it, more land? Extra territory? Extra terra? Extra terrestrials. Extra terrestrials from where? Outer space. Bingo. So why does it matter? Then when you understand that we're actually at the center of creation, this place was built for us, and we have natural law which says that nobody can take our free will away. Once you understand that, uh, that nobody has control over you, you take your power back. You stop feeding this beast system that we're in. Globers think they know everything, but they don't know anything. And it's only for those that are willing to look and understand and, and see why it matters that get it. You know, once you get it, you can't unget it. Is the Earth flat? Is gravity real? I don't even know what to think anymore. Come to conclude that the Earth is a sphere. That will give anyone a thousand dollars right now outside if you can prove me wrong.
What would you do with a brain if you had one? So wait, you what on? You were a flat earther, but now you're not. That doesn't right. make any sense. Absolutely, yes. I can't prove a closed mind. Right. I was gonna let you pass, but that was kind of a crazy movie. Did in there to get some good footage in your video. Are you gonna end with where they can find more information? Or are you gonna leave? That? All right, tell the viewers. If you want more information, go to flatearthgame.com. Don't believe anything that you heard in this video from him or from me or from anybody else. Go verify it yourself. Why is there so much misinformation? Why is there a giant disinformation campaign? going on right now when it comes to things like Flat Earth. Why are people being hired by like Disney, Walt Disney, you know the mainstream media giant, so that huge YouTubers like Logan Paul and others can discredit it? If it's such a ridiculous idea and a conspiracy theory, then why do they need to discredit it? Why do they need to censor it, more importantly? Filter through search results now, you can't even find critical thinking and information on this topic. All independent research of sending balloon satellites up into the sky show what? Flat horizon. The horizon actually rises with the eye of the viewer. You don't have to look down. Why is it that railroads, when they're built, are, don't account, the engineering blueprints don't account for the alleged curvature of the Earth? If you're building a bridge miles and miles and miles long, let's say in Key West, wouldn't you have to account for the alleged sphere of the Earth? How come airplanes that fly crisscross around the country don't also have to account for aviation changes and altitude changes on the curvature of the Earth? If the Earth is allegedly curved, wouldn't the plane have to go a little bit nose down every you know, several miles that it's flying to compensate? If the Earth is allegedly spinning a thousand plus miles per hour, and the average Boeing 747 flies 500 miles per hour, wouldn't the Earth be spinning faster than the plane itself and eventually catch up to it if, let's say, the plane was flying east? You know, when you begin asking these fundamental questions, you'll begin to understand that most of what you get on all the topics I just discussed, and believe me, there's many more, are disinformation campaigns. You wanna know the biggest disinformation campaign? The Flat Earth Society, it's controlled opposition by the deep state to make people that even consider these scientific inquiry seem insane. I never ask anyone to simply just believe everything I'm saying. In fact, please don't. That's how we've gotten into this whole mess to begin with, by blindly following others who say they've already done the research for you. You allow deceptions to occur. Please do your own research and test all things. What would you do with a brain if you had one?